Good evening, good evening. Howdy. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Good to see everybody. Everybody good? All right. Let's start out with a prayer time. And we've got a, a couple of things that I want to do with that. I want us to pray for Ukraine again. And then I want us to do our um, week of prayer day for North American missions. It should have been in your bulletin the other day. So I hope that y'all have been kind of reading through those and um, praying through those with that. And then have a couple that I want to point out also. So um, let's go, let's do the week of prayer thing first. I'll read it and then we'll, I'll include it in my prayer when we pray. This is for Jared and Jennifer Huntley in Washington, D.C., uh, deployed for Christ. Today is the fourth day, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, fourth day. Deployed for Christ. Jared and Jennifer Huntley had a heart for military personnel long before they launched Pillar Church of Washington, D.C. Jared had served in the Army and knows firsthand how difficult it can be to navigate the unique challenges of the military culture, especially without Christ. Now the couple is discipling and equipping military personnel and their families to follow Christ, share the gospel, and be missionaries if they are moved to other bases or deployed. Jared says it's a great way to accomplish the Great Commission. They're already transient, he said. The government is moving these people all over the place naturally. We see that, see that as an opportunity to disciple these families and then they're going to take the gospel with them everywhere they go. And pray, uh, pray for Jared and Jennifer to have favor on military bases and in the community. Pray for God to open hearts among military personnel and grow them in their faith so they go as missionaries to their future assignment. So we'll cover them uh, in our prayer when we pray. And so um, also want us to lift up Ukraine when we pray. Uh, but a couple that are not on our prayer list I had to mention Ann, so I'm glad you're feeling better. You've been having some inner ear stuff and tummy stuff going on, right? So we're glad that you're feeling better and here. And um, I was going to mention Daryl and the twins. So can you give us an update on them? Are they still pitiful? Or? They're better. Good, you're I'm good. <laughs> oh, he's here. Oh, there he is in the back. I didn't see you back there. You're feeling better now? Good, good, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But a, a big one is Dr. Eames with the high school is having surgery, is it tomorrow? Friday. Friday. Having, remind me, I can't, that's a big word, it's the double, double mastectomy. And so um, we definitely want to lift her up in our prayers uh, tonight and continue praying for her the rest of the week if you, if you will. And so um, anybody else that you'd like for us to add to our list to pray for tonight? Elridge, not Elridge, with a D. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a thing of the past. Now, I hadn't heard that word in a couple weeks. They they went um, mass optional Monday at, at the charter school, but he tested positive Sunday before. Oh. <laughs> He's at the charter school. Let's pray together and we're going to cover the week of prayer, the Ukraine, and these that we talked about tonight. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
the day that we've we've experienced today for the highs of the day and the lows of the day the um, the joys of the day and the frustrations of the day we, we thank you that uh, every single thing that we went through today that you were still God and it didn't um, it didn't diminish that in any way you are God and we thank you that you're a loving God who is involved in our lives and knows what we're going through and what we're dealing with and that you love us so much and have shown us your love in, in extraordinary ways. Lord, we, we do lift up all of our missionaries, whether it's North American missionaries or international missionaries, those, those that we as Southern Baptists support uh, with, our, with our offerings and the cooperative program. Uh, but we especially wanna lift up Jared and Jennifer Huntley to you. Uh, with their work with the military personnel in Washington, D.C. We thank you uh, for this pillar church that they've planted and pray for provision for that church and pray for favor for that church. Uh, we pray for, for you to have favor uh, on the military basis for them and their communities that they would be able to uh, influence the lives of the people around them and disciple the lives of the people around them. Uh, we pray that you would open the hearts among military personnel uh, in their area and grow them in their faith so that they can be missionaries to their future assignments wherever the military sends them. And um, Lord, we, we pray for uh, ourselves in that regard, that, that we all can be missionaries right here where we are by uh, <clears throat> praying for the people around us and, and building friendships and relationships uh, with the people around us and, and uh, intentionally sowing uh, gospel seeds and messages and, and God's word uh, into those friendships and relationships, discipling people, and uh, just help us to be, to, to have missionary hearts, uh, that we would have a burden for the lost and that you would give us discernment to see and recognize uh, the people that are in our, in our world, in our, in our community, in our workplace, in our schools, and in, in our families uh, that, that don't know you, that, that are uh, without the hope that we have. And give us hearts for those people and commitment uh, to those people. Uh, Lord, we, we definitely lift up the Ukraine situation. Um, with so, so, so many people being displaced and becoming Coming, having to move from their homes to, to safety and those safe passages and, and perhaps losing everything they own and, and having to do that. And those who have lost loved ones, those who have been injured uh, in, uh, this, in this battle, um, our hearts are breaking, Lord. Uh, our um, sense of justice or injustice is, is just uh, on high. It just seems so... Uh, so wrong of what's happening there. We, we may not know all of the story or all of the picture, but we, we do know that, that innocent people are being hurt uh, in the mix of, of all the political junk that's going on in that situation. And so, uh, Lord, we pray for peace. And we pray for protection for those involved. And we pray for the safe passage of civilians out of conflict zones. Uh, we pray for all these displaced persons. We pray for churches and humanitarian organizations providing care and supplies and resources there. Uh, we pray for the Ukrainians who have never heard the gospel before, that uh, somehow or another this would, um, that they would, they would hear about you and the hope that comes from you. And we pray for Ukrainian Christians there, that uh, you would use them to, to, to share that hope uh, that comes from you. Lord, I, I thank you that uh, Ann is feeling better. I thank you that Daryl's feeling better. Their family's feeling better. Uh, we do want to lift up uh, Dr. Eanes um, just for healing. We pray for healing. We know that uh, you often um, usually use the, the medical uh, knowledge and procedures that you've uh, let us figure out and, and develop. But Lord, we, we pray for your almighty, powerful, healing hand to heal her. And um, we pray that you give them, she and her family, peace, give her comfort, give her hope. 
Um, we just pray that this surgery would go well and that it would accomplish what it needs to accomplish. Um, we pray for her healing afterwards, that, that you would uh, help her to have a, a good recovery. Lord, I, I pray for the, the high school. I'm sure the whole high school is uh, just um, so concerned and out of sorts over knowing what she's going through. So I pray that you would, uh, well, I, I pray that you would use this. Now, I'm sure Dr. Eames would be uh, in consensus with this, that, that you would use this as a time to share the hope of, of Jesus with those who know about and are concerned about and are, are scared about and worried about and that this would be a time that the gospel could be shared, that, that the love of Jesus could be shared uh, with students and faculty and uh, those who, who need uh, the, the confidence and the hope that I'm sure Dr. Eames has as a believer. But um, Lord, we pray for um, the Randy Stickney family. Uh, this is one of uh, Linda Cheek's friend's sons who had a heart attack and passed away. Uh, earlier today and so I just pray for his family and, and just this shock uh, and this suddenness of this loss uh, and then safety as they travel to where where he is uh, just pray Lord that you would bring comfort to them and peace to them in this difficult time give them the strength that they need uh, we continue to, to lift up uh, JT Griffin's family uh, Pat and, and her daughters and JT's son and their uh, their family and pray for Charles McDuffie's family uh, pray for Bonnie Davis's family pray for uh, Joanne Overton's family and um, I, I pray for uh, I know that folks in here don't know her but I pray for Jean Bottoms family and, and their loss and uh, we, we rejoice with, with all of these that have been mentioned we rejoice uh, with the ones who have entered into your kingdom and who are seeing you face to face and worshiping you face to face right now that and we do pray for their families and that you would give them comfort and peace and um, Lord, we just pray for our time together tonight as we talk uh, about jesus help us to uh, just sense your presence right here with us speak to our hearts help us to get to know you better lord and help us to uh, to hear something that just strikes a chord with us or, or strikes a memory with us or just something that comes to make sense or just something that will help us to get to know you better and appreciate you more and love you more and love you better. Uh, we, we thank you, Jesus, for who you are and all that you've done for us. And um, we just pray that everything we say and do tonight would bring glory to you. Um, Lord, we do lift up the Jessup family and... Um, the loss of this this young young boy and i'm sure they're devastated we just pray for for them give them strength and comfort and um, we pray for john eldridge and dealing with covid that you would bring healing soon and very soon so we thank you we love you lord it's in jesus name we pray amen amen okay Y'all don't have sheets, do you? Well, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the doctrine of Jesus. And I really can't think of a... Uh, a more important doctrine for us to cover. Our, our whole fullness of life here and now and our whole eternal life scenario is dependent on our understanding uh, of who is, of, of, of who Jesus is and what he's done for us to secure uh, our, our salvation. And so uh, we started by looking at some of Jesus' names and what they mean and how there's power in Jesus name and then we started looking at some of the details of his life of of what Jesus was doing before his physical incarnation into this world his his pre uh, pre incarnation eternity past what's he been doing all of that time and then we looked at what you know just his his life ministry here on earth as a man 
And then we talked about uh, what Jesus is doing now from the time he was resurrected and ascended into heaven. Uh, what's he been doing? What is he doing now? And so now we're going to talk about how Jesus is both fully God and fully man. Uh, our life change objective for this section uh, is to develop an understanding of Jesus' nature as both God and man that will protect us against false teachings and that will give us confidence in trusting Jesus with specific needs. So tonight we're going to talk about what does it mean when we say that Jesus is both man and God. Uh, before we look at uh, look in the Bible at what God has to say about his son, uh, take a moment to answer in your head, you don't have to answer this out loud, uh, these questions. Don't be afraid uh, of getting something wrong. Or sometimes we just don't talk about, we don't think about the nature of who Jesus is. And so see, see if any of these apply. Is Jesus a man who became God? Is Jesus God indwelling a man? Is Jesus God appearing to be a man? Is Jesus a spiritual being ordered by God to become a man? Is Jesus fully God and fully man? And so each one sound right, but not all of them are right. Some of these are some of the beliefs of cults, of, of false religions. And so it's important for us to, to nail that down of, of which one is right. Of course, I've already told you the answer since, since I clued you in here that uh, he's fully God and fully man. Uh, none of the other four are fully accurate. And so uh, do you remember any of y'all big Indiana Jones fans? Do you remember some of those Indian, in, Indiana, Indiana Jones movies? Uh, the one where Indy is challenged to choose the cup of the Holy Grail that's supposed to be uh, the cup from which Christ drank at the Last Supper, or the Lord's Supper. Uh, and there's bunches of different cups there, different sizes, different looks. Uh, and it's believed that if you drink out of the right cup, you will have uh, eternal life. And so uh, if you drink from the wrong cup, it's instant death. And so he's got all these cups to choose from. Which one's the right one? Um, and so one of his enemies um, immediately jumps in front of him and, and drinks, chooses a cup that he thinks would be the perfect one that represents Jesus, which is a, a gold, a gold uh, cup filled with jewels. And he greedily drinks it down and immediately dies. And then uh, the... Uh, one of the most memorable lines in the movie, the ancient crusader guarding the cups looks at Indiana Jones and in an, understa an understated irony says, he chose poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Step into the movie. Suppose you have in front of you five cups representing five different ways of believing who Jesus really is. Four cups represent beliefs that are destructive, that lead to spiritual death. The fifth cup represents the truth of who Jesus is, the living water who leads to eternal life. How do you choose the right cup? Our intuition or reasoning is not enough. It can easily lead us astray. Other people's opinions can also lead us astray no matter how confidently they may speak. Uh, our opinions on this issue aren't worth much. The only one who can tell us about the true nature of Jesus Christ is God himself. And he's done that through the Bible for us. So at the very core of what God tells us about Jesus is this. Jesus is God. And Jesus is man. He is fully God, and he is fully man. So look at what these verses from John and 1 John tell us. And John 1.1, In the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And by that, John is referring to Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. So Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And then 1 John 4, 2, Good News Translation. Anyone who acknowledges that Jesus Christ came as a human being has the spirit who comes from God. So that's the, he, is, he is man part. Um, one tells us that Jesus is God. The other verse tells us that Jesus came as a human being. He's a man. So we're going to focus on the truth that Jesus is fully God and fully man. Uh, we need to know this so that it will protect us against false teachings about Jesus, which is the most common uh, misunderstanding in cults, is, is to mislead you about who Jesus is. Um, so um, to protect us from false teachings, and we need to know it, uh, an accurate understanding of who Jesus is, uh, because we need to know that we can trust him. We need to know that we can turn to him with our needs, uh, that he is able to, to meet our needs. So the first part, let's focus on Jesus as God. And then in a, a week or two, we'll turn it around and look at Jesus as man. So how do we know that Jesus is God? And so let's look at four ways. There's probably more than that, but let's, let's check out four ways. First, Jesus said or indicated or implied that he is God. And John 5, 18, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So they didn't like his teachings. They didn't like uh, these religious leaders didn't like the way he upset the balance of things that uh, favored them. Uh, but they understood what Jesus was doing. They understood that if he's uh, calling God his own father and making himself equal to God, that he was calling himself God. And they thought that was blasphemous. Um, John 10, 30. Jesus answered, I and the Father are one. So he's equating himself to God the Father. I, or I, and God, I and the Father are one. And John 14, 9, and then 10 and 11, part, part A. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. John 8, 58. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. You remember that phrase? That's an important phrase. That's an important title. I am. Uh, that comes from, uh, if you remember back when... God called Moses to go free his people from Egypt. And Moses asked, if they ask me who sent me, who do I say? And God said, tell them that I am sent you. So in, in, a, uh, in a weird way, God was saying, my name is I am. My nature is I am. Not I was, not I used to be. I am. And so Jesus here saying, I am. He's equating himself to God uh, when he says that. I love one of the gospel, I can't remember which one off the top of my head right now, but uh, one of the gospel's accounts of uh, Jesus' arrest in the garden. Uh, this mob comes for Jesus after Judas had betrayed him and led them out there to where Jesus was going to be, out in the garden of Gethsemane. And, and they're, they're looking for Jesus. They... They ask him who he is, or are you the right one, or however they put it. And he says, I am, and they all fall down. John. And then it happens again. They all fall down of, of the power of who he is. He, uh, they understood what he was saying. 
On one occasion, they picked up stones to stone him to death for his blasphemy uh, when he made that claim. And so uh, Jesus understood and his enemies understood that he was claiming to be God. C.S. Lewis um, wrote this classic line or this little passage uh, about Jesus' claims of being God. He said, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I am ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with the man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can try to shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and call him a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Wow. Uh, Chuck Swindoll, or Josh, Josh McDowell, rather, uh, kind of building uh, on what C.S. C.S. Lewis said, uh, once said that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. Uh, what are you going to do with Jesus' claim to be God? So Jesus said he's God, or implied he's God. Second, how do we know that Jesus is God? Other people around him who knew him, who watched him, who experienced him, said that he is God. And not only did Jesus himself claim to be God, but other people also said that he's God. And this actually started in the prophecies of Jesus' birth, even before he was born. Isaiah 9, 6. <coughs> For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So the Messiah that would be born, this promised one that would be born, was God. He, they were claiming he's, he's going to be born as a person, but he's going to be God. Isaiah prophesied. Uh, it continued with those who were closest to him, his own disciples. Uh, Luke 9 20, Jesus said, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, the Christ of God. If you remember the rest of that, uh, Jesus then uh, uh, encouraged Peter saying that you didn't, you didn't come up with that on your own. God opened your eyes to that. God helped you to see that. Um, John 6, 67 to 69. Uh, since I'm using my phone for the Facebook, I didn't do a, a timer. And so when it hits about 7.58, somebody, no, 7.30 or so, somebody grabbed my attention and I'll, uh, I'll cut out in the next 20, 30 minutes after that. Oh, well. <laughs> John 6, 67 to 69. Um, you do not want to leave too, do you? And this is after... Uh, Jesus had some, uh, he really messed with the crowd's minds when he started talking about having to eat his body and drink his blood and all that. And so a bunch of people had left. A bunch of his followers were freaked out and left. So he's turning to his, his disciples. Now, you do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And that's somebody that's being with a, a very, very, very human Jesus. You are the Holy One of God. John 1, 1 and 2, which we read a little bit already. John, the disciple, wrote, In the beginning was the Word, Logos, Jesus. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So John, John's big deal was, this is God. Jesus was God. 
Matthew 14, 32 and 33. Uh, after seeing Jesus walk on the water, uh, after seeing Peter walk on the water, when Jesus called him out to him, uh, says, uh, when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Uh, who else could do that? Who else could walk on the water and make somebody else walk on the water? You are the Son of God. John 20, 28, you remember uh, the resurrection appearances. Uh, Jesus appeared to a bunch of his disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. And the, when they reported the news, he said, oh, I won't believe it until I can see it with my own eyes and put my hands in the scars. So about a week later, uh, Jesus appears to them again. The resurrected Jesus appears to them again. And this time Thomas is with them. He said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Um, a, lot, a lot changed after Jesus' resurrection. Uh, even his own, during his, his ministry, growing up, his own family didn't believe all of this stuff. But after his resurrection, uh, at least two of his brothers believed. We have uh, the book of Jude by his brother, and then we have uh, the book of James, and James became a leader in the church. How much does it have to take for one of your brothers to believe that you're God? Perhaps a resurrection? Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't look at your brother or your sister that way, would you? So it took something uh, miraculous like his resurrection uh, to do that. Uh, Philippians 2, 10 and 11, the apostle Paul wrote that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, the, of God the Father. And so now compare that uh, to what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 45, 22 and 23. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by me every tongue will swear. You reckon Paul had that, that, that passage in mind when he was writing Philippians 2, 10 and 11? Now remember, he was a, he was a Pharisee. He knew the scriptures. He knew uh, the Old Testament backward and forward. So when he explained the lordship of Jesus to the believers in Philippi, he deliberately chose to paraphrase the words of Isaiah concerning God's greatness. For Paul, it would have been blasphemy to use these words of anyone but God. Every knee will bow before Jesus because Jesus is God. He's, he's encouraging the believers there at Philippi to believe in Jesus as God. Now there. So in Colossians 2 9, Paul said, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. So his own followers, uh, may, maybe not all along, but eventually all of his followers understood who Jesus was, that he wasn't just a good rabbi, uh, that he was God. How else do we know that Jesus is God? Well, we see that he was worshipped as God. Uh, many, many different people worshipped him, and we, we uh, kind of see that they're worshipping by the fact that they're bowing down to him. Um, 7.30? Okay, I'll, I'll stop there since that's a, a new point. So uh, We know that Jesus is God because Jesus told us he's God. We know that Jesus is God because his followers other people around him uh, said that he's God. And so next week we'll come back with a, a couple more points about that. And, um, and then, I don't know, it'll take us a little bit. I'm, I'm debating on what to do to prepare us for Good Friday and Easter. So I might, I might haven't decided yet, switch us up to looking at some of those uh, gospel passages uh, like 
Uh, you'd like to start from like the triumphant entry, the triumphal entry, uh, up to um, Jesus' death to kind of get us in that, uh, that mode of preparing for Easter. But I haven't, haven't quite decided how I want to do that yet, so we'll, we'll figure that out. But, uh, any, any thoughts or, or testimonies or anything you'd like to share about, um, about Jesus being God, both fully God and fully man? divine or, or wise words. Okay. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that, that since we didn't have the, the honor and privilege of, of living and during the time that Jesus walked this earth as a, as a man, as fully God and fully man, we thank you so much uh, that those who saw that firsthand uh, chose to testify. And then in time that those testimonies uh, became our, our Gospels, telling us uh, about Jesus and what he did and who he was. And so I just pray, Lord, that uh, as we think about Jesus, uh, that you would just give us just a, uh, an unwavering confidence of who Jesus is, that he is fully God and fully man, and, and the implications that that has for us. So, Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless us as we leave this place, that you would bless those who are here, those who are watching, our church family in general, uh, that you would watch over us, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, uh, that, that you would guide us each and every day, that you would empower us and equip us and enable us and uh, put words in our mouths uh, of how to share uh, your gospel and your truth with, with those, your love with the people around us. And uh, we just, we surrender ourselves to you and pray, Lord, that you would um, make our lives abundant and eternal as we live fully committed to you. So we thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope you'll have a great rest of the week, and uh, we will see you Sunday, if not before.